Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is our first video about infections arising from maxillary teeth. In this video, we will explain infraorbital space, that is canine space infection and buccal space infection. Uh, this is a flow chart uh, showing the potential pathways of extension of deep facial space infections of the head and neck. It shows the infection arising from the maxillary and mandibular teeth, infections from the uh, maxillary teeth to the vestibular, buccal space, canine space, infratemporal space, orbital uh, space, and the cavernous sinus. Similarly, infections spread from the mandibular teeth to the vestibular space, buccal space, the body of the uh, mandible, and uh, downward to deep uh, spaces and finally to the mediastinum. The maxilla is different from uh, mandible in that unlike uh, the mandible that is U-shaped, the bony palate forces infections arising from the palatal cusp uh, of the maxillary teeth into the palatal space. This space is formed by the bone of the palate and the overlying periosteum is often a drainage point for infection arising from the apices of the palatal roots of the maxillary teeth. Uh, fluctuant edema and uh, erythema of the maxillary left anterior vestibule associate with the necrotic uh, pulp of the maxillary left lateral incisor. Vestibular abscess uh, arising from the maxillary incisor overlying mucosa is thin because uh, pus is near the surface. The lingual apices of the mandibular teeth, however, uh, will usually drain into the sublingual space or uh, submandibular space depending upon whether they are cephalid or uh, caudal to the myelohyoid muscle respectively. Uh, it will be explained in our next video about infections arising from the mandibular teeth. Primary spaces are the facial spaces that could be directly affected by the odontogenic infections and they include palatal space, vestibular space and buccal space. Failure to control the infections may cause them to spread to secondary spaces including, including infraorbital canine space uh, and orbital spaces. As infection erodes through bone, it can express itself in a variety of places depending on thickness of overlying bone and relationship of uh, muscle attachment to the site. Uh, for detail, watch our video about spread and progression of infections. For those uh, infections originating from the buccal roots of the teeth are uh, from teeth with root apices positioned more buccally, uh, the usual path of spread is to the vestibular space and uh, then to the uh, vestibular space and then to the K9 or infraorbital space in the maxilla. The K9 space uh, or infraorbital space is bounded by the levator levi superioris and levator inguli oris muscles. When infections originating from the apex of uh, maxillary canine root uh, perforate the alveolar bone superior to the attachment of levator inguli oris muscle, this one, and inferior to the origin of the levator levi superioris muscle, this is the canine space, so the canine space will become involved. Alternatively, uh, this space may become infected uh, by the extension uh, from the adjacent buccal space infection. Similarly, infraorbital space infection uh, may spread directly uh, into the buccal space uh, area. So infraorbital or canine space infection is affected most by infections arising from the uh, particularly long root of the maxillary canine tooth this space may become infected by extension from the adjacent buccal uh, space infection and infraorbital space infection may spread uh, directly into the buccal space as described in the previous slide uh, through the flow chart. Uh, the space inferior to uh, the canine space uh, that is caudal to the levator 
in Gulai Oros Basal is the vestibule. Uh, here below the uh, levator uh, in Gulai Oros Basal inside the oral cavity is the vestibular space. The vestibular space infection often drains uh, spontaneously into the oral cavity. On the other hand, an abscess of the infraorbital space will often drain at points uh, near the uh, medial or lateral canthi of the eye because these lie uh, medial and lateral to the uh, attachment of the levator labi superiorus uh, that is attached to the infraorbital rim and represents the uh, paths of least resistance in this region that is the lateral and that is the medial these are the least path uh, of resistance in this region uh, this is the clinical picture uh, showing infraorbital uh, abscess uh, is about to drain medial to the attachment of the levator labii superiorus muscle. Uh, here you can see infraorbital uh, space abscess with chronic cutaneous drainage uh, medial to the levator labii superiorus muscle. On clinical examination, when canine space is infected, uh, swelling of the interior uh, face obliterates the nasolabial fold. Here you cannot see the nasolabial fold. Here you can appreciate the nasolabial fold. So this is the diagnostic of the canine space or infarctal space infection. Infections may uh, follow the extension of the buccal fed, uh, paired into the infraorbital uh, space, uh, the periorbital uh, space, infratemporal space, and the superficial, periorbital and the superficial temporal space. Now, the buccal uh, space is bounded superficially by the overlying skin uh, and subcutaneous tissue and uh, deeply by the vaccinator muscle. The maxillary uh, molars are most commonly associated with the buccal space infection. As we explained in our previous video, about the spread and progression of infection, uh, that infections arising from buccal root abscesses of molars perforate the alveolar bone immediately inferior to the attachment of the vaccinator muscle on the alveolar process, it lead to the vestibular infection. Whereas infection arising uh, from the buccal root uh, abscesses of the molar uh, perforate the alveolar bone immediately superior to the uh, attachment of the vaccinator muscle on the alveolar process, then the buccal space is involved. Here you can see a buccal space and a clinical picture. A buccal space, as we said, lies between the vaccinator muscle and the overlying skin and superficial fascia. Uh, <clears throat> and this uh, space may become involved via maxillary or mandibular teeth. Via maxillary or mandibular teeth. Uh, the typical buccal space infection uh, extending uh, from the level of the zygomatic arch here, this is the level of the zygomatic arch to the inferior border of the mandible and from the oral commissure to the interior border of the masseter muscle. Therefore, buccal space infection most commonly drains spontaneously via the skin at the inferior border of the mandible uh, as an oral cutaneous fistula or sinus tract, if left untreated, these relatively simple to treat infections can spread to the deep facial spaces of the neck, which are associated with significant pa patient morbidity. Involvement uh, of the buccal space uh, usually results uh, in swelling below the zygomatic arch and above the inferior border of the mandible. Therefore, if there is no extension of the adjacent spaces, that is the superficial temporal space or to the submandibular space, uh, then the inferior border of the uh, mandible remain palpable clinically in isolated buccal space infection. However, if the uh, submandibular space is involved, then the lower border of the uh, mandible is not palpable. So the when the isolated buccal space is infection is involved, then clinically you can palpate the lower border of the mandible. However, when a space is above the zygomatic arch is involved, our temporal space infection 
the clinically there may be skin irregularities uh, over the zygomatic arch because the facial la layers superficial to the arch are tightly bound. And the, so the swelling above and below the zygomatic arch uh, can cause the relatively or glass uh, or dimpled appearance over the zygomatic arch. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.